Found out my wife is cheating. Confronted her. Now she says it was just sexting or online. But... I need some advice. I found out my wife is cheating with a high school friend she reconnected with a couple weeks ago. I have the full log of text messages between them in all its sordid detail. In these messages, it appears clear that they hooked up at least three times. Not only that, but she is bragging about having sex with this guy to two of her friends. I confronted her, and she breaks down crying and starts telling me that it was just an online-only fantasy. She tells me that I drove her to this because I didn't give her enough attention and that she was desperate. It's true, we haven't had sex very frequently lately because I have a relatively low libido to begin with. I am full of resentment at the fact that I do 90% of the housework and childcare and the fact that I haven't slept in the bed for a couple of years because she likes to co-sleep with the kids. I guess I am culpable. Apparently, I made her do this. She also says she's stuck with me through all the things I have done in the past. I was not very good with money for a while and overspent forcing her to borrow money from her dad. I had a brief period where I questioned my sexuality, bisexual, and I have been a frequent user of porn. Are these things equivalently odious? Should I allow myself to be guilted into staying in this marriage like this? Anyway, through all of this I have no photos of them together, so I guess I can't definitively prove anything. Yet the texts appear to be clear and what happened despite her insistence that they are just fantasies. I start to relent and give her what she wants. I suggest maybe we need to see someone to help sort through these problems. We did counseling in the past, but I am not a very emotionally open guy and had a hard time talking. But she also resisted the counselor whenever he pushed back against her. She wanted him to fix me and didn't take kindly to being told that she might have a role to play in our difficulties too. So after we conclude this discussion, with her steamrolling me and offering to let me text her affair partner and friends for more info, I come to find out later from her text messages that she was texting both her affair partner and one of her friends to see if they would cover for her and tell me it was fantasy only. <laughs> I printed every text message she sent him. Why would she use text to contact someone to arrange cover? Good grief. I haven't confronted her yet about this, but it sure doesn't bode well for any reconciliation. We tried to have some makeup sex after, but before I read her attempts at covering things up. But I had a hard time maintaining an erection and couldn't finish because I kept thinking about the things said in the messages. I don't know about reconciliation. I was all set to leave her, and then the crocodile tears got to me. But this new revelation of cover stories opens it all up again. I don't know what to do anymore. She makes more than I do. We have a house, kids, etc. And being a very involved parent, I need to have my kids at least 50-50. I'm afraid that my low paying job will hinder that as a possibility. You wanted some advice? Let's give it to him, community. Street Unlikely 2018 says, make her pay you alimony and child support, but she's for the streets for sure. Another comment from that error 44. Haha, <laughs> right, like that's ever gonna happen. The courts hate men. Another comment comes from Cosborn40. Not so. Both of my mother's ex-husbands were deadbeats who made almost nothing, and they got a tidy sum in the divorce from their work. My dad made the same as my mom, so that was more even. But he got reduced child support, and his credit cleared almost immediately because guess who doesn't have four kids? That's a myth. My ex-wife also got railroaded in her divorce. She lost the house, got no alimony, and none of the possessions, even the ones she had bought. She basically did a clean slate divorce and didn't push it, and that was that. Usually in a divorce, men don't ask for 50-50 custody. When they do, the courts look on that very lovingly. And another big shocker is that most of the time, when a father fights for full custody, if he really wants it, he gets that too. The reason for the discrepancy is because fewer men ask for joint custody or want it. The numbers don't tell the full story. An ex-buddy of mine also got joint custody and a little bit in the divorce because he'd taken care of the kids and was a great dad. Men usually get what they ask for from the court, but they rarely ask for it, and like most people in society, falsely believe that kids need their mom more. That's changed over the years as more people realize the value of fathers. Yank Sargent has some more thoughts. You need to gather your evidence and see a lawyer now so you can see what your options are. Check and see if you are in a no-fault state. If not, her cheating will make your case stronger when it comes to splitting the assets. Let everyone know what she is doing. Your friends, yours, and her parents. If her partner's wife, if he is married, blow this thing wide open. Affairs only thrive in secrecy and wither when brought to light. Do the 180 and gray rocker. Have her move out of the house and stay at her boyfriend's. He has been sampling the meat. He might as well buy the cow. 
most likely he won't be interested. If she is making more money than you, then you may be the one receiving the child support and alimony, especially if it's a false state for infidelity. Fight for sole custody of the kids and work your way from there. With her cheating, you may win. Find out who she is cheating with and do a background check on him. He could be a convict or sexual predator. Get a restraining order where he can't come close to you or your kids. You may have contributed to the problems in your marriage, but her cheating is 100% her fault. She could have talked to you about your marital problems, but instead she decided to be selfish and find a boyfriend. What makes this worse is she has zero guilt and even brags about it to her friends. Oh, and if you know her friends and they are married, let their husbands know what they are talking about. Odds are, they may be cheating too. Reconciliation is impossible if there is no remorse. She may have sounded remorseful, but she proved herself a liar. Actions speak louder than words, and her actions say that she has zero remorse for what she did and is actually enjoying herself when cheating on you. She has no love for you, and your marriage is 100% dead. I'm sorry, but you have few options. You must do what you feel is right. Now the OP's response before we move on to the update. Her friends are all divorced women. <laughs> I've always thought that divorced women are quite possibly the worst people to be friends with when you are married, particularly when there are problems in the marriage. Misery likes company, etc. From his texts, he makes clear that he is not interested in a relationship at all, other than sex. Funny, he has a friends with benefits relationship with another woman that he wouldn't give up. My wife was very jealous when she found that out, according to the texts that I saw. The irony of that is delicious. Also meant to say that an STD test is probably imperative. Disgusting. Okay, now for the update. Unfortunately, I realize now that I may have jumped the gun in confronting her, as I have nothing other than text messages to prove her cheating on me. I have nothing that catches her in the flagrant delecto, exactly. Although to my mind, the texts are absolutely clear on what happened. They also show her running cover with her friends, an admission of an affair, etc. But nonetheless, she is doubling down on her story that no physical contact occurred. I have no pictures. She has gone so far as to offer to take a polygraph to prove her story. Enter the voice recorder. Oh, how I wish I had one of these a week or two ago. Anyway, on Friday she thought all was well and went over to a fair partner's place. I slept the recorder in her purse and overheard their conversation. They didn't have sex, but she said to him it was a lot of fun and outlined her strategy to use marriage counseling as a way to push for an open relationship. She also said that she would do it again if she gets a chance and propositioned him just before leaving. The next day, I told her I wanted a divorce. She doubled down on her story and wouldn't let me go, saying that you're just going to throw 10 years of marriage away? Excuse me, no. You threw 10 years of marriage away. She went over to his house again today to drop something off. No contact, right? And again, got even more admissions of sex. This time also, she outlined her strategy with the polygraph. According to the polygraph people, you can submit your own questions. Her story relies on the fact that other people were present when they met. Okay, probably true. She's going to write questions along those lines to prove her story. But really, who cares if other people were present? The fair partner has other rooms in his house, doesn't he? I wonder if it is worth letting her proceed with the polygraph, but insist that I be the one who write the questions? Or really, is it even worth it? I probably have enough and should just run off to a lawyer, but I kind of want to see her waste $600. Is that petty? <laughs> She thinks she can get around this by doing the polygraph and booking marriage counseling. She bought a book yesterday called His Needs, Her Needs, or something like that, and is insisting we read it together. What an infuriating book. It reads like no one has a choice but to fall into an affair. She keeps coming to me with passages that read like it is an inevitability. Too bad she didn't buy this book before she decided to screw someone else. This book is a weapon in the hands of a wayward spouse. Let's check in with the community again to get some more reaction. J Mama MD says, I am sorry to say that this relationship has almost a 0% chance of reconciliation. From what you are saying, not only does she not feel remorse or guilt, she plans on continuing. Save yourself now. I am so sorry that this has happened to you, but every minute you expose yourself to this person is another opportunity for them to hurt you. Don't worry about being petty or hurting her. Just protect yourself and begin the healing process. Get legal representation soon. She doesn't need to know yet and find out how to best strategize your exit so you can be in the best possible condition after everything goes sideways. The only thing she should be concerned with is helping you heal from what she has done. If she does anything else, she is only confirming that she still feels that she and whatever she wants is more important than you. It sounds like you know what to do, just not whether you're capable of doing it or not. You know what she was and is still capable of. Save yourself. 
The OP's response, This thing is killing me inside. I have never had anxiety before, and I am now being eaten alive by it. Can't sleep, can't eat anything without feeling like I'm going to puke. And then she tells me I should just stop being anxious. <laughs> she asks, why are you so anxious? <laughs> why do you think? J Mama MD responds again. She is hoping that pushing back on you will get you to back off so she can continue in peace. I was lucky to have a generally remorseful wayward spouse that was disgusted with herself for what she had done to me. You don't sound nearly as lucky, I'm very sad to say. It sounds like you are dealing with a toxic narcissistic personality. That person will most likely never put what you need ahead of what she wants. She wants you to behave like you aren't hurt, so she won't have to face what she is doing. Whatever you choose to do, you need to protect yourself now. It sounds like the idea of your pain is no barrier to her wants. I wouldn't worry about retaliation. Just look out for yourself right now. You're most likely the only one in your house who will.